Today's video is about Hurricane Harvey. Before we start though, a lot of people wondering how they can help. There's a handful of, of charities and nonprofits linked in the description below that could definitely use resources, money to help those affected by the storm. Well, I think uh, our emergency operations management can tell you that uh, from a neighbor to neighbor standpoint, we are telling people first and foremost, uh, check on your neighbors, uh, be a compassionate city. I think those are lessons we certainly learned from Hurricane Katrina. The hurricane is at category three right now. The potential for what they're saying is three feet of rain, but wind gusts of over 100 miles per hour. I've never seen anything like this. It hasn't settled in that like the house isn't gonna be here. Like we're gonna have to like tear it apart, burn it, or whatever they want to do with it. You know, all these families in town are just gonna be devastated. So it's just, it's sad. It's really sad. The number of people dead the number of, of pets dead, the number of homes lost, the price tag that will be the economic damage done by this storm. We could share all of those figures with you, but they're, they're definitely gonna change, and I'm sure they will have changed by the time we publish this video. And those numbers, those staggering numbers, they help communicate the scale of this storm, but not the emotional toll, not how it affected people. What it was like to be a person experiencing the overwhelming force of this hurricane. What it's like to lose everything. Okay, we're not even at Lamar yet. It's really crappy. We're basically on the other end of what will probably be a bridge, but it this place got destroyed. Now, Lindsay, our reporter, she found a woman on Twitter, uh, a woman named Hannah Miller, who's 27 years old. Hannah had evacuated her home in, in Rockport, but her parents, they didn't evacuate with her. Hannah hasn't been able to get a hold of her family, her parents, her brother, they're in Lamar, Texas. It's supposed to be the worst hit area. Apparently, cell phone lines are down, power lines are down, but she really wants to know if they're okay. So that's her goal for right now, is to get to Rockport, and get to her family. Everything smells burnt. It feels, it smells charred outside. That's gas. <gasps> we smell gas. There's a few cars that are going that way, but the, the rain is just getting so much worse right now. And we just need to get out of here before it's too late. This is a county road. It looks like a, a river, an ocean, a lake. The water's just kind of surging higher and higher. This is why we can't get to Lamar. Okay, we gotta go. Okay, Hannah, can you hear me? Yeah. Will you tell me what you've heard from your parents? They're okay? Yeah, we have some friends that made it in and found my parents. Um, they're fine. The house is like pretty much gone. So, so what's going on? Lindsay now is on the phone with Hannah. Both Lindsay and Hannah are trying to get to Hannah's parents' house in Rockport. Neither of them were having a lot of luck. So you're trying to make your way down to Lamar today? I drove to Fort Worth early yesterday morning, stayed there overnight, and then started making my way back down today. If we can get into Lamar tomorrow, we'll try to. Um, and I'll just, I'll just keep you posted. Hannah, she pushed on and eventually did make it there. The next day, when, when Lindsay arrived, Hannah was already there. We're at the bridge that connects us from Rockport to Lamar. This is where we couldn't get to last night. It's our second attempt to get to Hannah and her family. This is it, this is it right here. Hi, I'm Lindsay, Sharon, nice to meet you. How are you guys doing? Hannah, oh my God, can I just, oh my God, it's, Wow, so wait, where was this your is our house. house? That's your house? Yes, that's the, and this my, is... my oldest son Levi and my husband and I stayed for the storm and this is our rental cottage that we rent to oh vacationers. So luckily it survived. Wow. Um, so now we still have a roof over our heads. Let's actually go to your house. Yeah. I want to see your house. Man, this is the oh home, what's left. So we rode out most of the storm right here. Les built this house from the ground up, every stitch of it. That was what was hardest, you know. He's like, honey, it's just a house. I said, it's a house that you put together for our family. Do you um, have uh, flood no, insurance? we don't have home no flood insurance. insurance. No home insurance. No. No. 
How are you going to rebuild? Well, cash, like we always do. Wow. Dollar at a time. We have never borrowed money in our lives. Um, at this point, though, we may. Seeing as how this was going to be Abigail and Ben's home also. So at this point, you know, we're like, yeah, you know, we might need, might need to apply and get some help. Yeah. We've never had something like this happen. I think when it got like real was when my mom sent a text that was like, the whole house is shaking and we can't keep the candles lit. The roof is gone. And I was like, you mean the roof is, like, for a second you almost think they're kidding. Hannah's childhood home, Hannah's mini cabin where now six people are living until they can rebuild. This is our place. This is our rental. Six of us get to live here now. Wow. To think that, you know, so many of us, like my husband and I, were looking at retirement in five years. These cottages were our income um, for retirement, and all of our friends that are our age that are ready to retire, and now it's like we're starting over when we were 25 again. We shouldn't have stayed. <laughs> Do you believe that? You believe you shouldn't have stayed? No, we shouldn't have stayed. But I was worried about the animals, the cows, and the horses, and so. Tell me about your house. You built that house. Oh, Les, I'm sorry. I told her, I said, we've been strong until we, the realization it's just stuck. It's just stuck. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's just stuck. What was it like when you heard your mom's voice for the first time? Um, I actually heard my dad's first. And hearing him talk, and I could hear my mom in the background talking to someone else. It was just like a big, like I could finally take a deep breath and I wasn't tense. Like, it's like, they're okay, that's all that really matters. Tell me about when you saw the house for the first time. Just realized that like, yeah, it's, like, it's gone. <laughs> like, it's going to be gone. I think it's just like, I don't know, it's unreal. You smell terrible, don't you? <laughs> Knowing like my parents didn't have insurance on this house completely frustrates me. It's just rough and like my parents are getting older. So I think that's really hard. Those images of destruction at the Miller's farm in their community, they're horrifying. Especially knowing that Les had built that house with his hands. The land around there was land that he farmed on. He made his living as, as a landscaper. All of that was, was devastating. And the Millers, they're just one family that Lindsay happened to find on Twitter. And, and surely there are, are millions more that were affected the same way. And there are countless images of, of similar annihilation, destruction, and, and just heartbreak. But the pictures, the video, the, the images that affected me the most, the ones that will linger, the ones that when I think about this historic storm that will pop in my head first, those are the images of the rescues, of the kindness, of the bravery, of the willingness of strangers to help other strangers. And the Millers who, despite all that they lost, that's what they did. They, they stood up for their community. They reached out to help their community. And not 24 hours, less than a day after watching their home be destroyed and losing so much, the Millers were helping people from their community. That, that little house that was like their, their guest house that they would rent out to people visiting their ranch, they were letting their neighbors come there and shower and clean themselves up. Lindsay even mentioned that Les gave his car to someone. Someone needed a car, he just gave him his car. We're outside? Yeah. We'll just, yeah, we're gonna knock on it so we don't forget them. This is a small community. There's 5,000 of us and you grow up here, you spend your life here and my husband sees people he went to kindergarten with. I mean, and now you realize that, you know, they're, they have nothing. Flooded my new truck, my wife's new car, my tractor, all those. My daughter's house got swept away. If you're down 1781, Farm Road 71, you'll see her house is in the street. It moved probably 100 yards. So you're here to borrow a car? Yeah, they can borrow a car. I'm, I'm going to have to go buy a new truck tomorrow, I guess. They're, they're, they're so sweet, these people. How do you all know each other? Oh, uh, Les sold me cows. Les sold you some cows. He used to sell me cows, yeah. Well, I'm going to go because i got to get the oh, dogs. Of course. It was Thank so great you. to meet you. Bye Thank bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, you guys. Are great. Well, be careful. So hopefully we'll be able to help everybody in, in any way we can, and, and and the town has survived. I just know it's going to take a long time, a long time for everybody to get back on their feet again. Good luck. 
Thank you. Bye. Bye. So you have people oh, coming on the property just to take showers and yeah. our neighbors. Shower at the Millers mess. every night at 7, you get one and a half minutes in the shower. <laughs> yeah, if we brought clothes, that'd be great. <laughs> it's, it's been like 48 hours or 72 hours since, since you were there. Any update from the Millers or from Hannah? Yeah, I've actually, I was just texting with her. Um, I mean, they're starting to rebuild. They're cleaning up debris on their on their property. For the most part, the only problem is they're getting on each other's nerves. That's six people in one tiny guest house. That's all they have left. But um, they're great. They're great people. Glad you're back. Me too. It's Lindsay. I'm leaving Texas. I just wanted to give you all the opportunity. She sent your message back here to Houston to the people who came from all over the country to help, to the people who lost everything, what would you say to them? You guys are all incredibly strong and we are praying for you and doing whatever we can to help out here in Ohio. It's crazy to think that these people are just a few hours away from me. For the people that I know that were affected, they uh, are safe, they're okay, um, their families are okay, so that's always great to hear. I just wanna say it's crazy how divided this country was and when something like this happens, everyone comes together. Thank you for everyone that has helped went down to Houston and it's just amazing. Thank you guys.